You know, sometimes I like to go for a trail run or a hike and out in the woods and it's really fun to kind of look and observe and see the things that are around you. And lots of times while I'm watching the trail, I see animal prints and I got to thinking, wouldn't it be kind of fun to make a little book, your own little book of animal prints so in case you go for a hike with your family or some of your friends, you might be able to identify some of the prints you see on the ground and uh, show your family or your friends that you know a little bit about the woods. I got some reference books here, and what I'm gonna do is transfer some of these pictures into my own little book, put it in a little plastic bag where it'll be dry in case it's raining when I'm, when I'm out hiking. And um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that, but before we start, I was doing a little research and I thought this might be kind of fun. There are different names for groups of animals, and this is, is um, just, it's kind of cool. We all know whales live in a pod, right? Eagles live in a convocation. These are groups of animals. I just love these names. We've talked about this before. Owls are in a parliament. Bats are a cloud, a colony, or a camp. Bears are a, are a sleuth or a sloth. Bees are a swarm. Buffaloes are an obstinacy. Obstinacy which means they're sort of stubborn. Camels are a caravan. Cats are a glaring. I just love that. Wildcats are a destruction. Crocodiles are a basque. Cobras are a quiver. Foxes are a leash. Isn't that interesting? Or a skulk. Giraffes are a tower. A group of giraffes is called a tower. I thought that was kind of cool. Jellyfish are called a smack, a smack of jellyfish. We need to draw a jellyfish one of these days. I think we have, but we could go into more detail. Parrots are a pandemonium, a pandemonium of parrots. And porcupines are a prickle of porcupine. All these are animals that we'll probably end up drawing, but I thought it was kind of fun to sort of learn the names of the, what you call the groups of those animals. I'm Miss Therese, welcome to Art with Miss Therese, and we're gonna get started on our little guide to animal prints here. So what I'm going to do to make my book is I'm going to take my, my paper. I've got an 8.5 by 11, and you can do this with any old copy paper, any paper that you have around your house. It works best if it's a rectangle. So I'm going to take, with my rectangle, I'm going to take it and I'm going to take the long way and I'm going to fold it like this. I'm going to crease it with my thumbnail. And guess what I like to do? I like to fold it twice so I get a nice, good fold. All right, so now it's in half. Now I'm gonna fold it in quarters. I'm gonna take the bottom part here and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna fold it like that, okay? And I'm gonna come back again. I'm gonna refold it. Match the edges up as best you can. If it isn't perfect, that really doesn't matter. I'm going to flip it over and do this again on this side. Okay. And again. Crease it twice. All right. So now I have quarters. Look, there's math in, in art. There's always math in art. I've got quarters. And now I'm going to turn it into eighths. I'm going to fold it lengthwise this time. Match up those edges as best I can. Crease it. Okay, and refold it and crease it again. Now this is going to be your tricky part, so you can turn it into like a little book. What you're going to do is you're going to fold it back in half, like originally, okay? And then do you see this point right here? You could even mark it with a pencil if you wanted. I'm going to do that just in case. All right, and I'm going to bring my scissors in, and I'm going to very carefully, you see this line here, and you see that point there? I'm going to very carefully do a cut right just up to that point. All right, put my scissors away, kind of move everything over here. And now, here's the fun part. What you're going to do next is you're going to take it on the surface like this, okay? And you're going to take it like that, and you've got these two sides like this. Then you're going to pick it up, and you're going to fold it like that, and look what you have you have a nice little a nice little book. Oops, I think there's some oil pastel that got on that. Isn't that interesting? All right, doesn't matter. So here is my little book, and it's in eighths. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's the one that I've done ahead of time. And this is the one that we're going to kind of work, work with. I referenced all the different animal footprint shapes so we can draw those pretty quickly. But that's how to make your book. So we're going to start with that. Remember, you can always stop the video, replay it, um, and um, go a little bit slower because sometimes I have a tendency to go a little bit fast. This is a mule deer print, all right? And, and I'm just going to, I've outlined it in pencil. Okay, you can outline it in pencil first. And I'm going to just do it again with a marker. And animal prints are not always even, all right? And I'm just going to fill this in like this. I could also do it with a pencil. And when I was doing my research, mule deer, those are the deer that live pretty much all over the state. We live in Washington state and mule deer live all over our state. So that's my print, all right? And then when I was doing my research on this, I found out, and I'm gonna do this in pencil, I found out that these, the length of the print is about three and a quarter inches, all right? So this is, this is not to scale, this is a smaller version, but it'll fit in my little book. And so I just put a little reminder there that it's three and a quarter inches so that if I see this, I can kind of eyeball it and say, hmm, I think that was a mule deer. Another kind of deer that we have in this state, and this is different here, this is, oh, you know what I should do here? I'm gonna label this mule deer. See, drawing is really fun when you can kind of do things with it and make some things which are like really useful. The next kind of deer that we have where we live is called a white-tailed deer, and that's just in the eastern part of our state. It's east of our Cascade Mountains. And you'll notice this print is different than a mule deer. Mule deer is just pretty much a plain deer print. But look at this one. This deer has a hoof print that's slightly, it's slightly further apart, and it has little marks where the, where the back end of the hoof kind of hits the ground. And so we're going to color that one in. You know, when you draw something, you're going to remember it. That's one of the things that I've always found useful about sketching and drawing. If I draw something, I've really got to look at it. And then I'm going to kind of remember. Oops, my brain sort of kind of get it in there. So if I was over in the eastern part of my state and I saw this print, I would go, aha, that is a white-tailed deer. Here's what I like to do. I like to outline first with my marker. And again, you could do this with pencil. I might do the next one in pencil just to show you how to do that. You know, the nice thing about drawing is you can always hear the sound of a pen or a pencil on paper. I know I kind of sound like a nut with that, but I just enjoy, that's one of the things I enjoy about drawing. When I look this up, this print is slightly longer. This whole print is about four inches. I make the little inch sign there. I don't think I made the inch sign there. Put it back there. And again, this is going to be a white-tailed deer. I hope you're enjoying this. I sure am. And now look at this one. This one, this one you might kind of want to watch out for. I'm going to surprise you as to what this one is. This one I'm going to go ahead and do it in pencil. This one has four little toes, okay? And kind of a fat little foot with like a little indentation there. I'm gonna color that all in with my pencil. See, I can do the same thing with my pencil that I did with my marker. It doesn't really matter. The whole idea is just to draw it and kind of learn it. This is a porcupine. And I think if you saw a print like this, you might wanna be a little extra alert and maybe avoid the porcupine. I always, when I'm hiking, I like to, believe it or not, make a lot of noise and wear bells, <laughs> little jingle bells, because I don't want to surprise an animal. I want to kind of let them know that I'm there because that's kind of where they live. And, and if they know I'm there, they have a chance to sort of get out of, get out of the way and go hide somewhere. That's kind of a safe thing too. Kind of gives them a place to go to. So that's a porcupine. And look, I did that whole thing 
just with just with pencil. I'm drawing kind of fast, but it was kind of fun, so I kind of learned that. That's the front foot. has a little indentation like that on the outside, okay? And this is the back foot, same kind of thing. All right, and we're going to put this down here. Porcupine. Gosh, I'm even learning how to spell some of these animals' names. So there's that one. This one you may have seen. This is, this is a cottontail rabbit. This is going to be the front foot, the small, the small little paws. And their back foot is really big because their back legs are big, which kind of powers them off the ground. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to go back to doing my marker. And again, animal prints are not perfect when you see them because you have to think about what they're stepping in. If they're stepping in mud and the mud is really soft, you're going to get kind of a kind of a larger impression. If they're stepping in dirt or dust, it might be a little bit sharper impression. But just just as long as you know the general shape of those animals' footprints, you're going to be able to tell what was there. I always kind of like learning things like that. So that's the front paw. And this is the larger. It has four. I guess you could say they have claws because I guess rabbits have nails. So they have four, four little toes with, with um, claws on them, but you don't see the claws in the print. You just see the, you just see the footprint. And we're going to have some animals that do have claws that you can spot and animals that don't have claws. So there's this part here. I'm just going to color this all in. Like that. There we go. And I'm going to put, this is a cottontail rabbit. I can practice my printing too. And there's no real, this is almost a size here. This might be about the, the, the real size of that. So maybe, maybe about two and a half inches for the back foot maybe about an inch, inch and a quarter for the front foot. This one here, I'm going to write it down first. This is a coyote. And coyotes are almost like dogs. The difference between, you can see I've kind of outlined these here, and I'm going to do that a little bit further. Coyotes have almost like a little upside down heart shape for the pad of their foot. There. I guess I should have talked about the different parts here. That's the pad. And then their toes are kind of almost sort of, sort of kind of a round shape a little bit. This one has the, the outside toes got a little bit of a, of, a, of a sharper shape to it. The middle ones are kind of, sort of like a little bit, kind of a, just sort of an oblong shape. This is a little more triangular there. And coyotes, like dogs, have claws that stick out. So you're going to see those. They have one pad and then four toes. And the back one is slightly smaller. I didn't know about this until I started looking at it. So that if you're looking at a front foot print and a back foot print, the back one's going to be slightly smaller. They're both heart-shaped. And both of them have four of those sort of oblong toes. The toes in the back are a little bit smaller and a little more regular. These ones have the more triangle on the outside for the front ones, and the back ones are a little bit more regular. And again, you can see you can see the little claws out there. Now, if this was a domestic dog, domestic dogs have pretty much the same foot, uh, the, fa the same front foot uh, paw print as a coyote. But in a domestic dog, generally their back foot does not have that indentation in it, doesn't have that upside down heart shape. Let's see, what do we have here? Oh my gosh, this is a, I'm gonna write it down first. This is something I really like to avoid in the woods. This is a cougar. I love to look at pictures of cougars in my wildlife books and I just as soon just see their paws and not necessarily see them in the woods. A cougar again has four toes and a really big pad four toes for the back and a slightly smaller pad. So the front one has, it's not a heart shape, it's more of, what does that look like? 
It's got like one indentation at the top and then two indent indentations at the bottom. And again, because they're a cat, you're not going to see those claws because they retract their claws when they're walking. The claws come out when they're hunting or get a hold of their prey. And again, they're, this is a pretty good size print. These can be three to four inches. Sometimes maybe if it's a big cougar, almost as big as your hand. And I think if I saw this on the ground, I would probably go back the other way. It's always best just to be really safe in the woods. And the, and the, the um, back paw print is the same thing, just a little bit smaller. And again, these are fairly good sized. Big pad, almost looks, looks like an M, doesn't it? Big, big pad, almost looks like a fat M with big paws here. The other thing is, these guys are really quiet when, when they're walking. You really can't hear them. Most of these animals, except for deer, which you can kind of hear crashing through the bushes, they're generally quiet. The next one, this is really fun. This almost looks like a human footprint. This is, guess what? This one is a black bear. And I love seeing these because sometimes you think, gosh, is that a person or a bear? But you can always tell that it's a bear because they don't, there's no arch. The pad is just, is just does nothing but print on the ground. And again, I'm just filling this in. I could do it with pencil. But look at what I'm learning while I'm doing this. I'm really learning and these are pretty good size. These can be as big as your foot. They can be bigger than your hand, just depending on how old the bear is and how big the bear is. And again, if I saw this on the trail, I'd probably go, hmm, you know, I think I might go the other direction just to give that animal some room. And again, they have five toes. Almost like a human footprint. I don't know if you'd call that a big toe, but these are their toes and their claws are out. Again, it's a bear. It's not a cat. They don't retract those. Almost looks like a, like a human footprint. So I'm going to do black bear. I could practice my printing, be, as, be neat or tidy or not, either, either way. And then my last one, I thought we would do a bird for fun. We have a lot of these around here and they're all over the United States. This is a crow and they have three. There are three, three little claws there. That back claw that they balance on. And again, they've got little fingernails on those. So that's, that's a crow. So this would be common. You just hear my dog in the background there. Common crow. So now I have my little wildlife book here. All right. And I can, if I decide to go for a hike and I want to keep it waterproof, find a little sandwich bag, pop this in here, put it in my pocket, and I am ready to go for my hike and find some animal prints. So now you've got your little uh, booklet of animal tracks. We made, a, um, we made a booklet. You could practice this ahead of time with some scrap paper too if you don't wanna, if you don't wanna start out you know, right away that way. You could use a pencil or a marker or even color crayons to, to make our shapes and so on. I did have some reference material and you can, you can find that too if you have time and look for other animal prints. They're so interesting to kind of look and see what kind of prints all sorts of different animals make because we have a lot out here. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a lot and um, you take care.